actually Jenna. Yeah, Jenna, as soon as you're here, she, she shared um, with us this week just a picture that she had while we were at the school. So during prayer at the very end, um, I just got this image of all the doors in the school were closed, like down the hallway, and they just flew open, and this light just burst out and poured into the hallway, and the school was empty, but just that feeling that God's presence was so there that day is amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so, so we just were so grateful um, for just the opportunity to be there, to bless, to honor, uh, and, and the, the open doors that just being in, in that school system and being able to, to worship and praise and give God the glory. So can we just, uh, let's, let's just take a moment and applaud with just that heartbeat of God, uh, have that school, have this nation, have this community in Jesus' name. Can we do that? Let's thank them. Uh, there was also a kind of fun dynamic, too, where we had Kim and Holly and Keith and Detweiler, whole crew, all there and wanting to just kind of hear their story because they've, they've had a, a kind of fun little ride. So I'm going to ask Holly and Kim to come forward, unless the whole family wants to come stand. I figured Keith. <laughs> 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 deek, 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 deek. <laughs> uh, come on up come on come on come on come on now can we lift you up here you're good rock them okay under here okay got it awesome <laughs> perfect awesome so we'll uh, we can sit down you can, you can hear? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And see relatively? Yeah. Good. Awesome. <laughs> you want, don't want to go too close to the edge? No. No more cuddling. No. <laughs> so we, we just want to, in many ways, celebrate. Uh, how, how many have been praying for Holly and crew while she was away? Yeah. yeah. And so did you want to just talk just briefly about just that kind of support that, yeah, yeah, I know, gotta use the mic, I can tell, there's your reaction, yeah, thank you, yeah, thank you, yeah, yeah, it's been quite a journey, and uh, it's just amazing to see how God um, was answering prayer when I couldn't pray, just gets a smile that won't go away. <laughs> I'm sorry. Write this next one. Show me the person you just want to get a do get a drink. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you bring your own cup and just hold on to it? Yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think one of the things that like that that honest kind of thing that you, you get to a place where it, it's so painful, it's like there there uh, you're just torn with God, where are you? Right, and and just even maybe even angry. Yeah. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the first week um, when Holly was really sick and um, yeah, I have to like I said to Jeff at one point, Jeff was my like uh, he was my uh, my therapist for Paul every day, and I'd have my breakdown, and then <laughs> and there was a few days there where I was like, I'm just a terrible person because you know you always hear like oh in all things you worship and praise God, and uh, I just was like I can't do that right now um i just was at a pretty tough point and uh um and the really awesome thing is not only hearing like just the thousands of people that were praying for holly um was just uh amazing to hear um and to know that uh yeah you've got that kind of support behind you and and uh you keep being lifted up um but uh, how god uses um oh thank you thank you you. That I'm really loud. <laughs> <laughs> you're not loud. <laughs> you're actually heard when you're loud. Oh, I am loud. But um, yeah, how God uses um, cell phone ministry and Facebook ministry, and <laughs> I kind of laugh because there are times where I was like, just uh, yeah, I was just like, 
something in my heart was saying, I know I'm supposed to trust you right now, but I just, I, I can't even say that. You know, like, like, I don't know if I can explain it well enough, but, um, and then someone would send me a text saying, you know, I feel like God is, you know, and, and they would play into this trust word I got. Or, you know, there was, and there was many different things like that that would happen over that first week that was really tough. And, and, um, and so I was like, oh, God, you are so amazing. Because even when I can't pray, you're, other people are praying my heart um, for me. So that was just amazing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the first week. <laughs> that was the first week for you. Yep. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was awful, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you talk to anyone else about it after that time? <laughs> no. <laughs> and then, and then our our good news. So we mm. we're we're moving toward. Uh, there's a concern for surgery for those that didn't know, and uh, and th- and then that that kind of uh, prayer request that God uh, make sure. Yeah. Do you want to kind of talk into that a little bit? Um, yeah, so then uh, into the second week, um, once she was stable and, and she was well enough, um, they started, um, so they were going to have to do a test before they ultimately did. So she had, um, and this is just something that I found out about this week, so I just wanted to share this with you guys. She had kidney stones, um, and, uh, and one of them had obstructed her ureter, so she, um, so they were going to have to, uh, for sure go in and remove the stone, but um, unfortunately they had seen many, many stones forming in her kidney. And she only has one kidney, so kidney can be very uh, dangerous, obviously. And, uh, and so they were going to go in and do a test before they actually did the surgery. And they said, um, and, and then ironically, like there was a time where it was going to be pushed off a few weeks, and then all of a sudden she was well enough that they could do the surgery right away. And so he said, okay, we'll do the test. They were just on Tuesday. You know, he sat us down and said, um, you know, unfortunately, a very human side of a surgeon is that he was kind of like, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do. Um, here are the options. Here are the problems. Um, and we were facing some pretty, um, some pretty um, large change. Like, it was going to be pretty extensive uh, in the surgery. And so it was just a scary moment. Um, and I, I was just, I got to the point where I was like, oh, Lord, you know, like, I I need you to speak to this. I need everything to be, you know, um, God, it's between you and the surgeon so he can hear me clearly because right now you're the only one that knows the right thing for Hallie right now. You're the only one because I just, he was just sitting there going, oh, you know, just, you know, just that uncertainty in his face. And I'm like, oh, my God, oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> so scary. And so, yeah, so so I was just my, my, and I just felt like I was like, okay, you know, I have only you. I have only you. And you know all, and you know the best for me, you know. Uh, so I was just, uh, yeah, I felt like I was just down to, down to, what is it? Like bare bones. Bare bones bare faith. Bones faith, yeah. And, uh, and it was, um, yeah, so then, so he, um, so they did the test. And, and when I was really feeling like, I was telling Chrissy, I was sitting in this one waiting room, and I really felt like I had hit that point where my prayer was just a cry, like, um, not only do I want, you know, healing, but my prayer was like, make this very certain to this doctor. Like, make something very certain. So there's, there's because a lot of times, you know, health doesn't come in first. Like, there are, you know, there are lots of um, guesses in, in we're trying to make the, the best fix, right? And, and so I just wanted to be very clear to the doctor as to what to do. And um, so, yeah, so when I was sort of at that point, um, the, the uh, resident doctor um, kind of almost frantically is like looking around. He finds me in the waiting room. He's like, "Come with me. You are not going to believe this." <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, come on, let's go down." So we go running down the, down the hall, and he says, "You have to see this. I can't believe it. They're gone." And I'm like, "What do you mean they're gone? The stone is gone." And I'm like, "What do you mean the stone is gone?" And <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> and then as we're uh, as we're walking down the hallway, I'm like, "Yeah, but what about all the?" Because that's great if the one is gone, but we still have this like major issue to contend with. And and he's like, oh no, it's all clear. There's nothing in there. <laughs> and uh, and I was yeah. So thank you, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the doctor said I don't know how to explain it. I know how to explain it. <laughs> I know, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, 
Kim, Kim became the ex resident expert. <laughs> yeah, it was fun because um, just to backtrack slightly, I have, yeah. to, I have to tell about how the morning of the test, um, I, I had this, um, yeah, like Jeff just said, you know, put it well when he said it sort of dropped in me. Um, this faith, I was like, oh, I can't wait to do the test today because it's going to show that she's they're gone and that God has healed her. And I, I mean, I, you know, I, my heart believes in healing, but there's that part of my head that still goes, really, is it really going to happen? No, and, and, uh, and so, Talk to my oh, sorry, <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, I, um, but then, so when I had this feeling that morning, I was like, where has this come from? Because this is, yeah, it was, it's pure excitement to do this test. Anyway, so then when he said this, I was like, oh, well, because I know, because God healed her, and, uh, and he's like, well, there you go. <laughs> You want to hold it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Hallie, how did it feel when, because mom found you, right? How did it feel when you got the news? It's private. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, folks, let's just extend our hands and praise God for his goodness. Father, we just praise you and we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for a restored kidney. We thank you for Holly and mom and dad and brother and sister. We thank you for the whole Detweiler family and all that they've walked through. We thank you for the body of Christ that lifts us up in prayer and holds us in your love. And we give you praise and we give you thanks for absolutely no kidney at all. In Jesus' name. And all of you said. <laughs> Did you want to say anything? You're good? Okay. Well, thanks for coming out. Got it. Awesome. Okay, great. So if anyone's looking for nursing, Shirley Saint. It's available. Are you lonely right now? <laughs> I said, are you lonely? Would you like some company back there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Finally, a day of soaking and resting in the nursery. No, but you are free to go, Chantal. And we've, we've got some kids' tables over here. So this morning, I, I just want to just focus on God's goodness uh, and, and just celebrate his goodness amongst us. John, John 21, 24, 25 says this. This disciple is the one who testifies. So this is at the end of the gospel. It's one of my favorite scriptures. This is the disciple, the one who testifies to the events and has recorded them here. And we know that his account of these things is accurate. Jesus also did many other things. Everybody say other things. Jesus also did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose the whole world could not contain the books that would be written. Can you read that part with me? Let, let's, let's do 25 together. Jesus also did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose the whole world could not contain the books that would be written. In many ways, like I know Holly's story is just one of the stories from everyone sitting in this place. And, and we just want to celebrate this morning God's goodness. Thanking God, just remembering his goodness. Uh, Jesus at Peter's house. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. Oh. Actually, go... Let's go to Matthew 4. Take you there first. Matthew 4, starting at verse 23. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. Can we read that together? And he healed every kind of disease and illness. Everyone say every kind. So this morning, I... I, I that, that whole piece of in, in our heads, just like Kim was saying, in our heads we kind of believe in healing. 
And then to have God's word get to the place in our hearts where, where this becomes normative for the body of Christ. And, and you know, it's funny, um, even, even in that uh, journey with Tim and Howie, like you're, you, how many know how we walk through tough times with people? Right? And, and how many know God is still good? Even in, even in the midst of the tough times. Uh, you know, I, th- I think it was funny, the morning, the morning of uh, uh, the, the test, I called up Tim, and, and I, I, I was grateful in retrospect when I heard that she had a gift of faith that morning, because on the, on the phone call, I said, I said okay, we're going we're gonna to laugh at that kidney. And I said, will you go put the phone over Howie's kidney, and we're just going to laugh over that kidney. And, and yeah, just like that, ha, ha, ha. It was kind of funny because I guess it was on speakerphone, right? And 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 I, I'm saying that because in some sense it was a God prompting. Like you know, I I've been walking through the tough. I can't pray. I can't worship. It's hard. It's painful. It's scary. I don't know what their doctors are going to do. And 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 then it, it, there was just the being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And it was let's laugh at that. How, how, and, and so. You want to do me a favor and just laugh for a moment? Ha! <laughs> okay, do you have a tough circumstance going on in your life right now? Let's just laugh at that, shall we? Ha <laughs> ha! There, there, there is an act of faith that is happening in those moments. There's an act of faith that's happening in those moments. And then we read in scriptures... Jesus traveled around throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. Announcing that the kingdom of God is here, it's within reach, it's at hand. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. And so just that reminder that Jesus is perfect theology. So, so when, when we're struggling, Jesus isn't. He's perfect theology, which, which means... We get to walk closer to him to become like he is. And and there's that trusting of when we see this disconnect, God, you are still good and your word is still true. And every disease and illness is subject to the kingdom of heaven. News about him spread as far as Syria and people soon began bringing to him all who were sick whatever their sickness or disease, and if they were demon-possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, and he healed them all. Everyone say all. all. That's a good word. Oh. Then if you go to Matthew 8, I love this. Starting at verse 14. When Jesus arrived at Peter's house. Everyone say Peter's house. I, I just love the everydayness of the word of God. When Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. But when Jesus touched her, her hand, the fever left, she got up and prepared a meal for him. Isn't that amazing? That evening, many uh, demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command, and he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah who said he took our sicknesses and removed our diseases and so this this beautiful thing of you know I was talking with uh, Drew the other day and he was telling me that even in in, not even in St. Jacob when he was when he was looking at the history there there was someone in the town that had a healing ministry and people would just go to their house I, I want you to look at your neighbor and just say I have a healing ministry (laughs) <laughs> I'd say come on over to my house, but, you know, boundaries. <laughs> but that, that beautiful thing that every Christian, Christ within you, the hope of glory, carries the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. I, I just I long for the day when when 
the Holy Spirit is just so free to flow through every single one of us in, in, in such a way that they're all healed. That, that's, what, that's what we're walking towards. That's what we're believing in when Jesus, when we read his word and we say, he cast out the evil spirit with a simple command and he healed all the sick. Does that not just sound natural? Just a simple command and he healed all the sick. He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. Let's go to that Isaiah passage as we kind of move towards communion. And so I'm going to invite the praise team forward. Kim men mentioned how she kind of hit that rock bottom piece, and, and uh, I, how many of us long that not everyone has to go that far deep to know that Jesus is all you got, right? Uh, but sometimes that's, that's what he uses to reveal his goodness to us. And, and in Isaiah 53, it says, it was our weaknesses he carried. So often I've heard, and, it, and we just so struggle. Kim, Kim mentioned it, you know, that sense of, I wasn't feeling like a good Christian. Isn't it amazing to know that we can be weak and totally loved by God? It's, it's, not, it's not a place of condemnation. It was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so that we could be healed. This morning, I, I, I'm reminded also of Bill Johnson. He was saying one of, uh, in, in Bethel, he's kind of declared his community as a cancer-free zone. And af after declaring that, his father developed cancer, and his father was the founding pastor of the ministry. And he, and he watched his father die of, of cancers that he had seen healed before. And, and so this morning, when I'm talking about the goodness of God, I, I, I want twofold, because I, I realize that our, <laughs> our lives sometimes are complex. Yeah, you can start singing. Thank you, Tony. Good, good father. There, there's that reality that our lives are complex. And, and, and so often, e even, even myself, it's like, oh, God, how can I stand up front? How can I share? And, and the reality of getting this thing of how much God loves us and is for us. To, to be free from performance and to stand in his amazing love. And so Bill, Bill struggling with his father's death, he, he says, I still came to worship on Sunday and gave a sacrifice of prayer. I gave something that I know I won't be able to give in heaven. As, as I hold that tension between the unanswered things of my life and the trust and the faith in the total goodness and love of God. 
And so this morning, we are like, <laughs> when, when I got Tim's phone call that all the stones were gone, I did my own happy dance, didn't I? I let out a big, woo, you know. And, and, and so we want to celebrate the goodness of God. That is meant to be normal for the body of Christ. And, and if you're in a season that's hard and awkward, I'm, I'm just inviting you as we come to the table that, that you come with faith saying, God, you are good. You are good, you are good, you are good all the time. And you love me. The kingdom is advancing. And we get to be a part of it. So let's stand. So communion is going to work uh, this way. I'm going to invite people to come down. So wherever, if even if you're on the sides, if you can make your way back, come down through the center and then grab a, a cup and the bread and then head back to your seat. If you'd like prayer, I'm going to have Mike and Jan over in this corner and Nelson and Tracy over in this corner. And so if you're here today and you just say, I'd just love to receive prayer, uh, then I, I'd invite you to head into this corner. But let's put our hands on our hearts. Holy Spirit, I just want to thank you for this day. Let's just declare that together. Say, I'm a saint. Thank you. And so, God, I just ask that you would place your blessing upon the saints this morning. And we want to thank you as we come to the table, Jesus, to remember your death on the cross your resurrection, your ascension, and the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for carrying our burdens. Thank you, God, that you love us. Weakness does not scare you away. Thank you, God, that you died for the things that grieve our hearts. It says they were put on you and so even right now, God, the things that weigh us and are heavy on our hearts, we, we give them to you. And we say thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you're a daddy that wants us to walk as kids free and full of the joy of heaven. And so, God, as we sing this song, let it be a declaration of the faith that you're stirring up within each and every one of us. And as we receive these elements today, we thank you for the strength, the comfort, the peace, the cleansing, the wholeness, and the healing that you offer us through your faith.